Uh, then there's a, uh, a little talk with Million Dollar Man. And yes. Virgil. When Ted gets his Million Dollar Belt out, I think Virgil's had that away. <laughs> Virgil sold that. If Virgil had had that away and sold it, he would not still be in the underground <laughs> selling photographs of himself. I actually noticed there's a figure come out of Virgil that the WWE have produced. Oh, really? And he's in his sort of uniform that he's wearing here, sort of oh, white, white tux. cut off kind of tux, right? Yeah, and it comes with a banner that says, Meet WWE Superstar Virgil, like he uses at conventions. Wow, so it's like a meme kind of yeah. of, of taking advantage. I think that's going to sell lords, isn't it? No, it's Virgil. <laughs> it's Virgil. <laughs> no, but it's still Virgil. That's the story. Like, meme fans will I love want it. it now. Yeah. I if want you it made now. A, If you made a, a figure of, uh, I don't know, the keyboard cat, yeah. or the man who, uh, never going to give you up, man, God, uh, Rick why, Astley. Why are we wasting our time doing this? <laughs> <laughs> we, we could be sourcing materials in China now. This is crazy. <laughs> you notice in this interview that as soon as you notice it, you can't stop seeing it. Mm. But it's 89, and that to me seems like relatively recently. Mm. Everyone in this has got really dry, blow-dried hair. Yes. Every, everybody's... Full Edmonds. Oh. Full Noel Edmonds. And then you get one of the greats of this long, frizzy, dry, <laughs> blow-dried hair. It's Brutus the Barber Beefcake That's right, yes. The Million Dollar Man, Ted DiBiase. Um, Brutus Beefcake's mullet. Absolutely. <laughs> well, oh, so I, dry. I thought Brutus the Barber's hair was so long at the back because at some point he'll get his just desserts. Someone yeah. will chop his hair off. Yeah. But well, I don't, I don't know whether that happens What, what you're doing there is you're being a good booker. <laughs> <laughs> a clever book. Grow your hair out. Grow yeah. your hair out so we can cut a bit of it off. Yeah, I would I would say this is another WrestleMania where we don't get to see him cut anyone's hair. No. And it's it, uh, just disappointing. And, and also, two things I noticed about Brutus the Barber Beefcake. It's a return of a really bad sports bag. Oh, yeah. Because his, his shears comes in a really bad sports bag. Dirty. The last time we saw a dirty, dirty little sports bag was the crappy Andre the Giant one from WrestleMania 1. Yes. Um, where Andre had a lot of money he won. Do you know, I was walking through Kilburn about a year ago mm. and I... I went past a bloke who came off the bus and he had the exact sports bag that Andre has <laughs> and he was not a guy who you thought oh he's being hip or anything no this is like a 1982 Titan Sports <laughs> like employee's bag that is full of dollar bills he had no idea I was just thinking oh my god where have you if I said where to him can I, can I buy that bag for three quid he'd just go oh this is a muggy <laughs> don't know what's going on oh it was a great bag great bag great bag um, Gorilla shouts Brutai is looking bigger than I've ever seen him before <laughs> alright Gorilla don't give the game <laughs> Rudai looks to be in excellent condition as always. In fact, he's quite he's bigger than I've ever seen him, Jess. I think Million Dollar Man uh, this is quite distasteful because in 1989 mm. uh, there was a mini crash in the stock market after United Airlines stock fell and people say that started the entirety of the 90s global recession really? <laughs> and that's great Million Dollar Man Ted Biasi flaunting his wealth I, I think, think it's he all is one fault. of those people who he's a good good villain yeah. but, and it comes out of that dynasty thing but it is weird isn't it that you have to hate him because he's rich and he like <laughs> scorns you and everything yes. and not, not to want to sound like I'm doing some terrible Terrible BBC Radio 4 <laughs> political thing. Mm. But I mean, isn't that what we've got nowadays? <laughs> <laughs> he's, he'd, be a, a a Bitcoin, he'd be a Bitcoin entrepreneur. He would, no, yeah. There's, there's a little as well. Yeah, I mean, if he was like me, he would have lost quite a lot of that recently. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it might have bounced back by well, the time this comes out. I mean, I, mean, I wouldn't I mean, say... I mean, trend-wise... I wouldn't say I've been checking pretty much every hour. <laughs> but, but let me tell you, <laughs> bouncing back, sometimes before it bounces back, it has to bounce down again, doesn't it? When, <laughs> <laughs> exactly. There's no narrative otherwise, is well, there? Well, it's, it's going to be a fucking big bounce back because there's been a lot of bouncing down. <laughs> if you'd like to meet Mark in person, he will be on Tottenham Car Road tube station yeah. selling pictures of himself. But I only accept Bitcoin. <laughs> but, but only Bitcoin from 2009 <laughs> when it was worth something. I've got to, I still don't know how it works. Um, I, I did a little bit of looking into Brutus Beefcake okay, as right, to yeah, what yeah, he's yeah, up to yeah. now. Yeah. There's a period where he's pretty good in the ring. Right. Because he's working with great guys and the mm. fans love him. And he, he should be in the Hall of Fame. Mm. I noticed when I went onto his Twitter, it's mainly him retweeting people who say, Hey man, you should be in the Hall of Fame. <laughs> and he's like, yeah, retweet that. <laughs> Loads of misspellings in them. Um, it's like Oscar season, you've got bloke, lobby for it. One bloke wrote to real, uh, at real Donald Trump, the president's address, to say, Can you suggest to Vince McMahon to put Brutus Beefcake in the WWE Hall of Fame? <laughs> I mean, that, that sort of man should be arrested. <laughs> I mean, 
mean, it, it's one of the situations that you imagine that Donald Trump would be only too happy to get involved in. It probably would be, wouldn't it? <laughs> I, I mean, I mean, it wouldn't be the stupidest thing no, he's ever done. No, exactly. You know. Lobbying the, a rich man to put him in a fictional hall he had, of fame. He had, he had the thing. cheers, he had the butt, the butt, the, <laughs> the booty. Butt. Give him the booty, man. Tremendous. You, you can go in, but you've got to go in as booty, man. <laughs> the biggest star of all time, <laughs> the booty man. You know, uh, oh, man. Booty's, big now. Booty's are big now. That's a big thing. Booty's it's, a big, big. it's a big deal. P- people like a bit of thick. <laughs> now, uh, he's also got a shop where he's oh, yeah. selling his old gloves that he says he's used in the ring for $50. You can also buy shears, mm. normal garden shears, <laughs> shears that, uh, from him for £150. Quite a mark-up there. Um, they say the actual clippers that he brings to the ring with him. Um, mm, mm. Hard to yeah. tell. Yeah, hard to tell. And also, it doesn't matter. <laughs> oh, right. also, no. Very if, if true. If they've been in his possession. I mean, if, I imagine they come pre-wrapped, unsigned from China. <laughs> yes. Uh, that's just, where I keep my things. Just working as a middleman. Guangzhou. I keep all of my things in Guangzhou now. <laughs> Can I have them signed? Do we like them, mate? <laughs> <laughs> he was he, Virgil will do it for a fiver. <laughs> uh, we get the, the next match, which is Mr. Perfect versus Blue Blazer. Yeah. Um, t- two smaller men. The Blue Blazer under the mask is Owen Hart. Who yeah, so the, he, he died as the Blue Blazer, didn't he? He did, yeah. It was This was the gimmick they saddled him with, thinking he was quite a small guy. Mm. But at this time, in, in the in the late 80s, he'd been to Japan, and he was just the most sensational American wrestler right. working. Pretty much the only American wrestler who could work with the Japanese high flyers. Mm. He goes to Japan, makes a huge name for himself. He finally signs with the WWF because probably his brother is there, and, you know, mm. that's the sort of interesting thing. They don't know what to do with him at all. And he's small, so they just go, oh, he's a joke act. He can come out, we'll put him in a mask, and he'll do his flips, his yeah. little flips, and then he'll lose. And that's all they did to him. And just at the time, he was, strange, he was, he was, one, he, he was one of the top good. five wrestlers in the world. Yeah. They just didn't know what to do with him. Mm. The sad thing, really, with Owen Hart, is you see him at this, I hadn't watched this for years, and seeing him as the blue blazer in this, when he does die in Kemper Arena, which is 1999, mm. they brought back this Blue Blazer gimmick after he'd become a big star. So right. he was a big star. Mm. And they brought this back as a sort of fun, sort of sh- inside joke. Yeah. Uh, where he'd be the Blue Blazer and, uh, oh, who is it? Well, it, we, we know it's Owen Hart and everything. And mm. it was a tribute and a nod to the fact that he was rubbish in his early career and mm. things. I mean, it's just, a, it's horrible seeing that suit now. It makes me feel ill. Yeah, and I think, because um, it wasn't caught on camera, was it? Or, or it was the, the tapings kind of... No. No, it, it took place shot. during a live pay per view. You can, you can Luckily, hear, hear I, I think I heard uh, the clip of him hitting the bloody. Well, you, it's an astonishing piece of footage. I, th- I do believe it's up on the network, it's which is somewhere. a remarkable decision. Oh, was that, that right? Took. Okay. Yeah. But it's, it was a big pay per view. He was put on a harness above the ring, and the mm. idea he was going to be lowered quite quickly into mm. the ring as a sort of superhero's entrance. For whatever reason, the harness came free, and he mm. just fell from mm. the ring, from the rafters into the ring. Yeah. Awful in front of this thing. The time on the pay per view, they'd cut to a little vignette where he was pre recorded talking about eating your prayers and saying your vitamins, mm. a sort of joke about what Hulk Hogan used to do. Mm. What's astonishing in that pay per view is y- you've never seen anything like it before, where you've got all the people who work with him who are sort of family members, mm. they're having to keep the show going. And yeah. so Jim Ross and Jerry Lawler realise something terrible has happened. Because he's sort of watching what's unfolding. They all saw it. And yeah. it's, it's just the most horrific mm. set of circumstances. And this uh, is the, well, it's one of the most shocking things I've ever seen. This is not your typical wrestling uh, storyline. This is a real situation. Owen Hart was to ascend in a superhero-like entrance from the ceiling of this arena, and something terribly, terribly went wrong. I don't know if the harness broke or what the malfunction was, and uh, we are going to keep our cameras uh, on this crowd at this point in time. The decision was taken. They weren't entirely... Sh- they knew it was a very serious injury. Yeah. Serious accident. Mm. EMTs worked on him in the ring. He was turning blue. They feared the worst. Yeah. But they had to make the split-second decision as to whether the pay-per-view would con- continue mm. or whether they should just shut it off. And they made the decision to carry it going, just sort of... I think because they didn't want the horror of a crowd leaving sort of going what happened mm. and they sort of went well let's try and pretend everything is normal and we'll mm. you know sort this out it is one of the strangest things you can ever watch mm. I mean people are, are coming down to do their matches Jeff Jarrett 
especially in Deborah, the valet, just in tears. Yeah, because they're the next um, act, aren't they? Cause yeah. Uh, the, what happens next? Yeah. So weird. And they were incredibly close. It's it's a really, uh, I mean, it's so horrific. And it's such, it's, by all accounts, you know, he's the nicest guy in the world. Mm. It's it's such a tragedy. And seeing him here as well, and you realise quite a lot of his career, he was a brilliant wrestler. And quite a lot, a lot of his career was these people not, quite using him correctly Mm. and it must have been a frustration for him and what he didn't get was he didn't get the 10 years at the end where I think people would have said he was the best in the world and it's you know ah, watching this it it just makes me a bit sad really Mm. it's uh, and why not you know why shouldn't it but you'll never see the two of these people, the two of these wrestlers having a bad match. You could put Owen Hart or Kurt Hennig in the ring with anyone and they will have the best match that a person can have. And they're pretty good here. They've only got a, a short amount of time. Uh, they end with a perfect plex, which is Kurt Hennig does a sort of suplex and he pulls his shoulders off the mat. Right. So, Hercules, have a look <laughs> at that. that that's that's how one. a real wrestler does Fig it. Fig one. Fig one. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> let's not end on a sad note. No. Let's, uh, let's, let's end on Jesse the Body Ventura uh, just doing something. Uh, there's a weird thing in the last <laughs> WrestleMania, for some reason, because it's only running at like 15 and a half hours, they realise they need a little bit extra. Yeah. So they say to Jesse, why don't you get up there and just do a pose? And it goes... <laughs> weirdly well um, <laughs> people seem to eat it up yeah. he starts doing some flexing yeah and the f- crowd's going crazy they about do. it yeah and then they go Wrestlemania 5 they go you know what Jesse it went so well at Wrestlemania 4 you're going up again mate <laughs> right and he does it and again the crowd go mental it's crazy isn't it is it for because he's got like an obscene tie-dye t-shirt oh on. yeah <laughs> and, just, and, he, and, a, and he, a white silver tasseled leather jacket yeah and a gold and black studded bandana you do see like extra extra large leather jackets in um, vintage shops and you go who's what on that <laughs> and it's, it's Jesse the Body Ventura every time <laughs> I bet it reeks of really <laughs> cheap 80s cologne <laughs> man oh man uh, he is as far as I'm concerned he is is the white male Grace Jones. <laughs> I, I would love... He's got it all. I would love to introduce those two and then watch them fuck. <laughs> Imagine the noise. <laughs> Jesse screaming. <laughs> Grace <laughs> slapping everything. Marvellous. Marvellous. Period. End of match, end of quotation. Why? Because he carries a flag? No. Let's go to ringside. <laughs> 